the Lord. Hallelujah. How has your day been? I want to believe you had a great day today. You had a great day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hope you didn't walk too much. I know some of us are walking from home. Amen. I want to appreciate you again this evening for joining us on this program, Power of Prayer. You and the nation, you will be made a praise in the head. Hallelujah. I appreciate everyone that always invite friends and family and colleagues to join Grace to Grace when we are on. I pray that the Lord will take you to another level. I pray that God will grace your life with favor, with mercy, and with blessing. And for some of us that have not been doing, I want to also encourage you to please start doing it. Make sure you are telling somebody about the goodness of God and also telling somebody about this platform. Praise the Lord. It's not because we just want the number to increase, but we know that there is word of life that is coming out from this uh, platform. There's word of grace, there's word of healing. And this word, you know, some people need it, need it even more than you need it. So don't keep it to yourself. Let's try as much as possible to begin to spread the good news. As I will say, you have people in your offices, your colleagues at work that also need these messages. You have people in your family member, you have people that are your relations that you can always tell to join us anytime we are on. So please, let's begin to do this good work for the kingdom of God. Also, not just looking outside or alone. We have members that we don't see online. I want us to take this responsibility to encourage them so that they can be part of our online program. Praise the Lord. Let our children be part of it. Let our spouse be part of it. Because the more of the word of God that we have, the more of his presence that we carry. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Also want to quickly say thank you to our uh, worship team and also our media team. We appreciate your good work. God bless you. God bless your hand and bless the work of your hand in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And before I go on, invite your friend to join us again tonight to subscribe to our social platform, to like and also share and always switch on their notification. It, will, it shall be well with you in Jesus name. Amen. Let's quickly bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, you are, we are in your presence again tonight. We have nothing of our hope. We have come again, gathering in your presence to dine with you through the word of life that will be given to us. I submit and I surrender that it will be you that will take these lips of clay and speak through it. And I ask that lives will be touched, life will be changed. Lord, I ask that personally you will minister to people. You will minister grace. You will minister, oh Lord, encouragement. Your word will bring lifting to many hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of this uh, meeting, people will testify to the goodness of God. And all the saints of God will say, Amen. Praise the Lord. The title of my message this evening is Worthless Gathering. Did you hear me? The title of my message, I'm going to repeat it, is Worthless Gathering. So I want you to get your notes, pad, your high pad, your pen, and start writing. Write the title of the message, Worthless Gathering. I know some of you will be thinking, what's, what's pastor saying tonight? Don't worry. As we go, the word of God will be unfold, and you'll be able to get what I mean by Worthless Gathering again tonight because I know God is going to use this season and this time to build us. God is really building us. He's preparing us. Anything that will not make us enter, God is taking it out of our life. Somebody asked me uh, recently, said, uh, what is the preparation if Jesus is going to come? And I said, the preparation is the word of God. When you hear the word of God, what do you do? You begin to, you sit down and begin to search your life. Anything that you see that is not meant to be in your life, what do you do? 
It's like stretching out your hand and you want to clean part of your home. You begin to take it out of your life. You make up your mind that I am not going to do this again. You make up your mind that this is not the direction I want to go. Then you begin to go in the right direction. Hearing the word of God help us because it builds us and it builds our spiritual muscles. And I want to thank God for God that we are hearing the word of faith and we are hearing the word of life. So please be encouraged as you are hearing this word and make sure you are using them. Don't just hear them. Make sure you are using them and God will help us. Hallelujah. I say God will help us. You didn't hear me. Again, let me say it. I say God will help us. Amen. I pray tonight that you will learn from this teaching and be filled with the wisdom from above. As we are preparing for the last month of the year, I believe it's about 49 days for us to go into a new year. So we really need preparation. We need spring cleaning of our life. We need to take some things that are not meant to be in our life. We need to take them out. And hear this, God is not the one that is going to help us to take it out. We are the one that will make the decision that we don't want this again in our life. Then the Holy Spirit will back us up. Praise the Lord. As we are preparing for the last month of the year to enter into the new year, there are certain things that if you don't do it now, there will be carry over. What did I say? If you don't do it now, if I don't do it now, there will be carry over. It's my prayer for you that there will not be carry over into a new year for you in the name of Jesus. There are some unfruitful people. Did you hear what I said? I said there are some unfruitful people that you need to cut off from. I know evenings like this, we talk more about prayer. But do you know, if you have people that are not right in your life, they can hinder your prayer. And this you need to take note of. As I go through this teaching, and I want you also to begin to learn from it. One of the things I want you to do tonight, as you are seated, I want you to be focused not just for you to be focused. I want you to be attentive to the Holy Spirit. I want you to invite the Holy Spirit personally as an individual. And I want you to do it this evening. Sit down. You may sit down with your children. You may sit down with your husband. You may ask your husband question and your wife may ask the wife question. You may ask your children question. I said there are unfruitful people in your life that are so close to you that you need to cut off from. If you don't cut off from them, you remain static. But it's my prayer with you tonight that you will not be static in your life in the name of Jesus. Who you choose to be your closest friend or associate is one of the most important decisions you will make during the course of your life. I want to go back again. Please lend me your ears. Invite people to join us tonight. Because you don't know who you are going to bless. You don't know who you are going to help. You don't know who you are going to deliver. I go back again and I want you to jot this down and I want you to look at it again. Who you choose to be a close friend or associate is one of the most important decisions you will make during the course of your life. And I want you to just look at it. Who are the people in your life that you have chosen to be your friend or you call them friend? Who are the people in your life that you flock with? Who are the people in your life that you come in with and you go out with? And you have never sat down to reflect where you are and where you are going. Do you know your friend has a key important role to play in your life? They have a key important role to play in your life. So sit down and lend me your ears. Bring your children as well and let them learn. Your children is key tonight. So bring them, let them join in this. Let them listen to this. And after this, ask them question. Second Kings 2, let's go to Second Kings 2, 23 to 24. Second Kings 2, Second Kings is in Old Testament. So don't go and look for it in the New Testament. Praise the Lord. Then he went up from there to Bethel. And as he was going up, by the way, young lad came 
out from the city and mocked him and said to him, go up, you bloodhead. Go up, you bloodhead. 24. When he looked behind him and saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two female bears came out of the woods and tore up 42 lads of their numbers. Hallelujah. I, as Elijah approached Bethel, 42, where well, that word lad means young men. As Elijah approached Bethel, 42 young uh, men gathered together. And when they saw Elijah, Elisha, they mocked him. They called him name, black, a uh, blood edge. Go up, go up. I want to say, maybe they have heard about what happened between Elijah and Elisha. You know, Elisha, Elijah was taken by the chariot of fire to heaven. And I want to believe, although that's not what the scripture says, but there are two schools of thought again on this. So they said to Elijah, go up. Maybe they were saying to Elijah, go up the same way your master, you know, has gone up. So they call him bloodhead. Elijah turned and cursed them. And the two bears came up and tore them up. 42. 42. If I may ask tonight, whose company are you? Or who are your associates? Did you hear me? Whose company are you? Or who are your associates? Who do you call friends? Who do you sit with? Who do you spend time with? Hallelujah. Why will God allow two bears to kill 42 young men? Simply for saying Elijah was blood. Let's take a look. Hallelujah. One of the things I put down in my notes this evening, they were in the wrong crowd. What did I say? They were in the wrong crowd. I pray for you. You will not be in the wrong crowd. In the remaining days of this year, I pray for your children as well. They will not go with the wrong crowd. Do you know if 42 of them were not part of that crowd, they wouldn't have died. But the 42 of them that were part of the crowd did what? They died. A mysterious death. Beard came out and it tore them apart. Hallelujah. Beard came out and he tore them apart, 42. I want to believe that that day in Bethel, there will be mourning, there will be crying, a lot of things will happen. Praise the Lord. But hear this, who are your close associates? Who do you spend your time with? Who do you stay with? Who is that person in your life that is not the right person? And you are, you, are, you are knitted with that person and you are working together. Friends in your life are like pillars. So I want you to note this. I go back again. I said friends in your life are like pillars. They either hold you up or keep you down. So I want you to think about that for a minute. I go through it again. I'm not in hurry tonight because I want us to get something. I say friends in your life are like what? Pillars. They either hold you up or keep you down. So think about it. They hold you up to your next level or drag you down. You become like those of your close associates. Whoever you call friend, look at your life. There is a pattern. There is something that is in their life that has transferred to your own life. If you have a friend that is an alcoholic, before long, you may not be an alcoholic, but you also will be doing what? You will be taking some, a bit of, uh, you know, what they are taking. 
praise the Lord. If you have a friend that smokes or on drug, it's easy because the more you are close with them, so some people will say, I ah, know, I know, I know, it's not possible. I, I won't do it. If they are just my friend. The more time you spend with them, the more they corrupt your life. We are talking about worthless association. And I'm asking you, who is your friend? Who are those people you call friend? If you have people that, you know, have people that humanize or yes, humanize and you spend time with them before long, there'll be an extra tire one day they will bring. And uh, if she's sitting alone and you also say you are not going to join them, after a while, the extra tire that they bring will also associate with you. So this, we need to think about it. You know, the year is going to an end. We only have 49 steps to the new year. And this is the time we start making a decision. There are people that you need to delete. There are people you may leave them on your phone, but you don't have anything with them. I want you to reflect on your life tonight before we go and pray. Remember, friends are like pillars. They hold you up or they hold you down. So you need to ask yourself, the people in your life, I want you to just sit down and do an MOT of your life. The friends you call friends, what have they been able to change in a positive way in your life? Or what have they been able to change you to? Because it's two way. Change is either positive or negative. So I'm asking you this question. People you call friends, people you call associate, people that you can't do with, people that you always call, People that you want to tell what is going on in your life. People that every time you are around them. People that every time you sit with them. People that every time you long to be in their, in their midst or in their company. I want you to look at their life. Is your life not just like them? Remember I said that friends are like pillars. And I want you to take note of that. Friends are like pillars. You know, pillars are so important in any building. If there's no pillar, the building can crumble. So the friends that you have in your life also, they can also cause your life to crumble or they hold you up in order to get to your next level. Hallelujah. If your life is not moving forward, I've come tonight for us to talk. You know, the scripture says, come, let us reason together. And we are just reasoning together tonight. If your life is not moving forward, I want you to look at your close associates. If your life is going in circle, I want you to look at the people that you are your company. You know, at times, there are people that are not going anywhere and you also find yourself in their vehicle. Do you know that once you find yourself in their vehicle, they take you to the direction of where they are going? And I want you to think about that. When you have people that are not going anywhere, you have people that they don't have any work. If you have people that are scammers, before long, you'll be part of them because they begin to tell you how sweet they get money. And if care is not taken, you fall into their path. This is a word of wisdom for us tonight that I want us to sit down and think about. This is not what I wanted to preach, but the Holy Ghost took me in this direction and I have to submit. I've told you my life is no longer mine. I have given everything to him. If you are not moving, if your life is not moving, look at the life of your close associate. If your life is also moving, look at the people that you surround yourself with. Do you know often a time, we don't look at these things. Up to a time, all we do, we pray, we blame, we blame it on the devil. But it's not all this that has to do with the devil. And I want us to get this tonight. It's not every time that this has to do with the devil. If your life is moving in a circle, watch the people you have just associated with. That may be the cause of your life being in a standstill. There are people that comes into your life 
and everything is transformed in a positive way. There are people that comes in your life, your life is lifted to another level. There are people that comes into your life, may have been part of your life, you are motivated to go forward. There are people that comes into your life, may have been around them. You are always inspired either to read, either to do something positive. You are not in competition with them, but they complement your life. May I pray for you tonight. May God bring people into your life that will complement your life. May God bring people into your life that will shoot your life into another, another level. May God bring people into your life that you will not have to use up your grace and your energy, but they are coming into your life, we impact your life, we affect your life, we take your life to another level. May God bring people into your life that we influence you in a positive way. Remember, I want you to look at that again. Our friends are like pillars. Hold on to that word tonight. Your friends are like pillars. They either hold you up or they hold you down. So right now, are you up or are you down? Look at the people that you associate with. They may be the cause of you down and they may be the cause of you getting up. Praise the Lord. Do you know when you have the right people and right company in your life? Those children, those youth, the 42 of them, they were in wrong company. They were in wrong company. And because they were in wrong company, BS came and it tore them apart. I pray for you that you will not be in a wrong company that you will die on timely days. As a result of association, I've seen people that they have wrong association in their life and they went to parties and every one of them ended there and none of them were able to get to their summit or their destination. This will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Those youth that we read about in the above scripture, which is the book of 2 Kings and 2, remember 23 to 24, these youth were caused because they were in wrong company. I don't want to say every one of them were bad, but they, are, they were in wrong company. I say again, your company matters in life. So it is my prayer that you will never be in the wrong company. Remember I told you, maybe you have forgotten before the lockdown, the spirit of the Lord said, we should watch who, uh, who we, what we say and what we endorse and who we hang around. As I was putting this sermon again together, the Holy Ghost reminded me, and I've come again to remind you, maybe you are just joining us tonight. You don't know what I'm talking about. The spirit of the Lord was giving us what is going to happen ahead of us in the year to come. And one of the things that he warned us from the system from, he said, we should watch the company of people that we are in. So I've come to remind you I've come to plead with you. Be careful the company of people that you find yourself. And also be careful what you endorse and, uh, and what you say. These are key for the years that we are preparing to enter. Hallelujah. Do not be part of worthless gathering. What did I say? Do not be part of worthless gathering. When you are associating with people, people that will just sit down, all they will be talking. You see, they are, they are different kind of people. I find this in Nigeria. I don't know, some of you that are from Nigeria, I, I, I've seen this happening a lot of time. The first time I saw it, I told the driver, I said, well, I want you to move, I want you to move. And he said, ah, mommy, there's nothing that is happening. I saw a lot, a lot of people, they surrounded uh, the news uh, agents and all they were doing, you know, it got to a point they were fighting. All they were doing, they were just commentators. They couldn't buy papers. So all they would do, they would surround the news vendor and, and, uh, and they will be reading there. They will read the, uh, the news uh, papers there and there they will be making comments. They will make comments. Sometimes they will, it will lead to argument. 
Sometimes it will lead to fighting, worthless association. That's what I'm talking about. They'll just be talking. They will tell you, ah, this president did this. That president did this. They will talk about party. They will talk about politics. Their time is wasted. They will just surround whoever that is selling the papers. There are people like that in the journey of life. They wake up in the morning. They just sit down. They talk about politics. They talk about whatever. They keep talking. They keep talking. They keep talking. So it becomes a routine. The energy that they put into talking, the energy that they put into talking politics and other people's business, they have never thought in life of using that energy in a positive way. They talk about people, they argue about people, they debate about people, they say a lot of things about people. Do you know we have them everywhere? Also, some of you have people like that in your life. When they call you, you must look for two hours or three hours. They are just online with you. You aren't going anywhere. You are just talking. You talk about A, you talk about B, you talk about C, you talk about D. You talk about things that are not your own problem. You have wasted time that you need to be praying. I'm preparing you. Everything I'm doing now, I'm preparing you for the kingdom. I'm preparing you for the year ahead of you. There are certain people you need to cut off from. I repeat it again. There are certain people we need to cut off from. If we fail to cut off from them, we aren't going anywhere. It is one thing for us to pray. It is one thing for us to spend time in the place of prayer. There are people, you know, that they are young, they are getting old, but they don't know, but they don't spend their time in doing anything positive. I've come to challenge you tonight and I've come to prepare you for what is ahead of you. As I'm challenging you, I'm challenging myself. As I'm looking at you, I'm looking inward as well. Because when I've come to preach, I don't come to preach as one that is perfect, but I come to preach as one that is running a race. And I want you to have a deeper understanding of this. Go with me again to the book of 1 Corinthians 15 as we look at verse 33. Are we there? Do not be deceived. So take note. Bad company ruins good moral. I want to read it again. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good moral. I'm strong. You can't talk to me like that. These are my friends. You can't ask me not to have friends. I can't be without friends. But here it is. Bad company, bad company ruins good moral. Bad company. A lot of believers are in bad company. Do not be deceived. You have to make decision. The Bible makes us to understand if your eyes will hinder you from entering heaven, what do you do? You pluck it out. Anything from now, begin to look at it. Anything that will hinder you from getting to heaven, you have to sit down and you have to begin to think, what am I doing now? Who is in my life that is not meant to be in my life? I'm not saying you shouldn't have friends, but I'm saying, according to the scripture, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good moral. Bad company. Who are your friends? The people you are hanging with. What is their lifestyle? What do they do for a living? How is it affecting you now? The people you are hanging out with, I want you to look at your life. Have you begun to smell like them? Have you begun to talk like them? Have you begun to walk like them? These are things you need to think about. Do you know that after staying with people, let's say I use a very good cologne. I use a very good perfume. And I sit down in the place. Everybody that sits like me will smell like me because they are seated close to me. Have you ever been cooking all day? You have been in the kitchen and you, all been, you have been cooking and you have been cooking. Then suddenly you appear in the gathering of people that use very good cologne. Do you know what is going to happen? They will smell you. When they smell you, you won't like it. Because cooking will be smelling in your body. 
How is it that what you are cooking is smelling in your body? It's smelling because you have stayed here too long. It's the same way in the journey of life. When you hang out with wrong crowd, you ruin your morale. When you hang out with wrong crowd, exactly what they are doing, you also will practice it. Am I talking? Exactly what they are doing, you also will practice it. Praise the Lord. Somebody said something recently. He said the first time he, he smoked, he said, a friend have just been, uh, finished smoking and he just, you know, he, he, he quenched the cigarette, but there's still like a light in the cigarette. He said, so he walked out. He said, quickly, he picked up the cigarette and he said, I want to see how this thing tastes. He said, so. He said that was the beginning of smoking in his life. He tasted it. And he said, oh, wow. It's like this thing is also good. It may be good, but it's not good for your health. Am I talking to somebody? How did he find himself there? Wrong company. Wrong company. Praise the Lord. One of the most important decisions a person will make in life is who you associate with. So take that again. One of the most important decision a person will make in life is who you associate with. Are you associating with egos or chicken? We need to ask ourselves. We don't just want to be brain, 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 die, 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 die. We bind it, we bind it, we bind it, we bind it. Praise the Lord. Who are you associating with? Am I talking to somebody tonight? If you associate with a eagle, you soar like an eagle. If you associate with a chicken, your lifestyle, your pattern becomes like a chicken. If all you associate with are people that are not thinkers, there's no way they're going to challenge you. Am I talking to somebody? If you don't associate with people that are thinkers, you just sit down, you sleep and wake. But do you know when you that you associate with people that are thinkers, they challenge you. For me, there are people that I look up to on a daily basis. I want to be like them. I want to, I want to do some things that they have done. So I strive on a daily basis to get to that level. I don't just want to live my life like a Methuselah, living up to 900 years, but there's no life that I am impacted. I don't just want to come and see and all that we say that is gone. I don't want that to be my portion. So I'm using tonight to speak to us at the power of prayer. Do you know God answers prayer? But there are certain people in your life at times that can hinder your prayer. There are certain people when they are in your life, your prayers cannot be answered. Am I really talking to somebody tonight? There are certain people that you hook up with. The more you hook up with, you find out it's a life of struggle. It's a life of struggle. You struggle with everything. You have seen people that came into my life at a time. And this is the truth because I love to preach about my life. So I'm not just talking. I've seen people that came into my life. Do you know everything at the time was so hard? When I say hard, it was so hard. To hit was even a problem. Everything I was doing, I find out that there is problem. There is problem here, there is problem there, there is problem there. So one day, I decided to go into long fasting. I went into long fasting. I started my fasting on a Friday, and I ended it on a Tuesday morning. And I was before the Lord, and I was crying. And I said, God, even when I was in Nigeria, life was not this hard. What is it? That now, even to eat, to have money, it's a difficult situation. And I spend time in the presence of God. I spend time in the presence of God. And I began to speak to, the, to, to God. And after a while, do you know God did not say anything to me during that period? Then after a while, the Lord spoke to me. He said, you have wrong people in your life. He said, wrong people are in your life. He said, as long as they are there, he said, things will be tough. Then the Lord, from that point, made me to understand 
There are certain people you don't uh, you don't allow even into your home. There are certain people you don't just feel that well because you have space, because things are good for you, you just want to take them. Yes, you can help people. I help people. It's part of my lifestyle. So that's not what I'm talking about tonight. But God was able to teach me in that season so that my life will enter another level. And the moment this, uh, this set of people left my life, things begin to turn around. Things begin to change. Hear me. There are prayers that you have prayed. As I, start, as I stood before God again today, it took me back, memory lane, to remember those days and for me to know that a lot of people right now, for them to have their deliverance, there are certain things that you need to take out of your life. There are certain people that you need to part with. You see, there are certain things that you are struggling with now. It's as a result of wrong crowd. What did I say? Wrong crowd. What did I say? Wrong crowd. You see, in, the, in my life journey, at least I've been in ministry by his grace now, going to 32 years. I find out that when you don't walk in the ways of the Lord, some things will not be right. I find out in the journey of life, there are some things don't need prayer. What did I say? There are certain things that don't need prayer. What did I say? There are certain things that don't need prayer. When you walk in the ways that you need to walk as a child of God, some things will begin like that. It will come to place. Some things will set itself up. You see, your destiny also will line up with the will of God because you are walking in the will of God. This is what we are talking about tonight. Shout hallelujah. So it's not everything at times that needs to, you need prayer, you need prayer, you need prayer. No, you need more of God. What did I say? I need more of God because the more of him you get, the more of him you have, he said, he will instruct you. He will instruct you. Hear me and hear me very well. There are certain things that will have happened to you. There are certain levels that you will have been in the journey of life. But because of wrong crowd, it takes the journey that will have taken two years. At times may end up in taking 20 years. I go back again. The journey that will have taken you two years or, or two days at times or 20 days can end up taking you for a lifetime. What did I say? A lifetime. I say it again, a lifetime. Anytime you are in a wrong company. Hallelujah. Anytime you are in wrong company, the joy, journey that will have taken you like that, you'll have gone fast, fast, fast. You find out that nothing is moving. But when you are with the right crowd, you find out that things begin to work in your life. There are people that when they, you permit into your life, you, you are stuck and you can be stuck forever. What did I say? I say you will be stuck forever because you permit them into your life. You see, there are certain people when they come into your life, I'm preaching deliverance again tonight and I want you to lend me your ears. There are certain people when they come into your life, they didn't just come into your life. Hear this, open your ears and hear me. They come with their spirit. What did I say? They come with their spirit. Say so they don't just come into your life. They come in as a baggage. They come in with everything that is in their life that is not also working. And when you join your life with them, nothing works in your life. I want us to look at the life of Abraham and Lot. Aha, there are, there are lots in your life until they live your life you cannot reach your canal. Can I say that again? There are lots in your life, L-O-T, that when they are in your life, you can't go forward. The more they stay in your life, keep praying. The prayer won't work. It takes the help of the Holy Spirit to open these ears for you to hear. And if you fail to hear what the Spirit is saying, you are stuck and you can be stuck for life. I want you to think about this. The more Lot was in the life of Abraham, hear this. Abraham kept receiving the promises of God again and 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 again. The promises kept coming and nothing was changing. So there was delay in fulfillment and manifestation of the promises of God in the life of Abraham. What did I say? There was delay. What did I say? There was delay. God kept promising Abraham. When God called Abraham, God did not call Lot. Do you know that? 
It was Abraham that took Lot and said, let's go on the journey. Let's go together. Uh -huh. Am I talking? We are talking about worthless association. People that are not meant to gather in your life that you by force. You see some of you, you want friendship. You are crying for friendship. So you bring some people into your life by yourself. Some of you even force them to love you. Is it by force? Is it by force? So you are buying gifts. You are buying presents. You will wake up in the morning. You will have to greet them. You will wake up in the morning. You will have to say something. You will wake up in the morning. Am I talking to somebody? Praise the Lord. Some of you, you are in wrong crowd. You need to come out. And it takes the help of the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to it for you to get your deliverance. I believe I've said this. I've used this illustration. Time will not permit me. I'm going to continue with it. But hear me because I want you to pray. Hallelujah. These two ladies are good friends. You've heard about the testimony. God bless this lady. She had the fruit of a womb in her ministry. So she invited her friend. So they came to the office one day to see me. And when they came, this lady was asking. He said, uh -huh. he called her the name. I don't want to call that name. He called that person a man. He said, do you want me to excuse you? You don't need to say that. You know, somebody is there. Excuse them. So she asked the lady. He said, do you want me to excuse you? Uh, or what do you think? You know, the lady will not be able to say excuse us. A lot of time, you have people like that in your life. You have friends like that in your life. You, they will take you somewhere and they'll be asking you, do you want me to excuse you? You Because they are, you feel that ah, you, you are not comfortable. Actually, you want to tell them that excuse us. But you say, well, sit down. But you are not comfortable. And do you know, that can even hinder your prophetic word. Because the word that God is giving to you, what God wants to start in your life, they hear it. They've already known it. And they can be the one again that will be as an interest to the fulfillment. So when this lady asked, he said, do you want me to go out? And the lady said, ah, you are the one that brought me. <sighs> okay, um, stay. You know what the Holy Spirit, because it's the day of deliverance for that lady. The Lord said to me, he said, send her an error. I said, send her an error. He said, yes, send her an error. So I said, oh, it's even good. I said, you are going to excuse us. I said, mommy, I said, yes, you are going to excuse us. There's something I want you to get. I, that I asked the lady, I'm meeting the lady for the first time. I said, do you have anointing oil? Ah, he said, no, I don't have anointing oil. I said, okay. I said, you know what? In that shop across the road, when you go far, when you turn the hair, you will get anointing. Go and get anointing hold for us. And when you bring it, stay outside. I'll call you when it's time for you to come. Praise the Lord, somebody. Am I talking to you tonight? Get wisdom. The Bible said in all your getting, get wisdom and get understanding. The word that you are hearing tonight, share it. Help people. When we are coming online, you don't know the word of God that is going to come for you. So don't pick and choose. I will be in this. I will not be in that. Do you know? Mere hearing the word of God delivers you. Mere hearing the word of God gives you free victory. The Bible says he sent his word and the people are delivered. He sent his word. He sent his word. You see, when we are talking about deliverance, the power to deliver is in the word. Am I talking to somebody? And this is why you see, anytime I come up, I don't want to take you to the place of prayer without taking you to the word. I want to take you to the word of God. So by the time I take you to the place of prayer, already the word has delivered you. So I send the lady, I said, go, go and, go and buy us uh, anointing up. She was, so she went. So I said to the lady, I said, this is what the Lord is saying. In the next month, you will be pregnant. This will happen, that will happen. And the lady said, I said, but, you see that lady that brought you? He said, yes. Everything that we share here is for this place. Ah. She said, ah. I said, yes. Everything that we, we share here is for this place. You want to give back? He said, yes. He said, but she has been helping me from one place to another. I said, me, I've said my home. If you like, when you leave this place, you share it. 
That's not my own problem. And I can give example. Not that's not the only example. So the lady after a while came and he said, ah, mommy, have you seen her? I, what, did, what did you say? Ah, I said, for me, God will not say anything to me, but ask her if God said anything. Exactly like the case of Saul. You know, Saul was with Samuel. <laughs> Spent time with Samuel. And God told Saul, said, you are going to be the next king of Israel. But when you meet your uncle, close your lips. Some of you, you should have moved to another level. But there are certain friends in, in your life. They have remote control that controls you. What did I say? They have remote control. They are the one controlling your life. When you will be in your home, if you don't tell them, hey, you can't do. When you, whatever you are eating, you are calling them. As I'm eating, I'm eating fish and dodo. As you are sitting now, you are telling them everything that is happening in your life. That's why your life has not moved forward. You don't need too much prayer tonight. Too. You need deliverance from evil friends. What did I say? You need deliverance from evil associates. Praise the Lord. And if you too, you are the associate that is evil to another person, you need to check your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The people we surround ourselves with have a direct impact in our life. Who you surround yourself with have a direct impact. Some of you, oh my God, can I really talk tonight? Some of you even invite friends. His friend, you invite them into your bedroom. You could say, come and sleep on my bed. Somebody you don't really know. You ask them to come. Your bedroom, I've said this and I'm repeating. Your bedroom is your altar. Your bedroom is not even for your mother. <laughs> not to talk of your friend. Your bedroom is what is your altar. That is your altar. If you don't know, let me tell you tonight. So some, some of you are so careless. You invite your friend. He's sitting on your bed and he's talking. He's sitting on your bed and he's, he's gisting. Hey, you are dead like Dodo. May you not be dead like Dodo. You invite them to your room and they'll sit there in your bed and they'll be talking. Some of your friend has the boldness to come and meet you in your bedroom. Your bedroom that belongs to you and your husband. And he's sitting in your room and you are gisting. And your husband is walking up and down. Hey, you have turned that life, that life upside down. Your bedroom is a closet. Your bedroom is your altar. Your bedroom is a private place for you and you alone. It's not that friend comes. He say he wants to talk. Your friend say we have something we want to talk about. I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. Tell me here. What did I say? Tell me here. If you can't tell me, let's go to toilet. What did I say? Toilet. We go and stay in toilet and we talk about it, but not your bedroom. Don't befriend people to the point that you open up your bedroom and make it a place where you can, you can, you can sit down and be, and be talking. Not even your mother has right to your bedroom. Am I talking? If you invite them to come, it's not your, your bedroom. Let them sit outside. Let them talk. Yes, my mother have lived with us. The first day my mother came to London, the first question he asked, he asked myself and my husband, he said, please, where is my apartment? And we were looking and we were laughing. I said, mom, what? He said, no, you must give me my boundary. Give me my boundary in your home. This is your home. It's not my home. I am an intruder here so that I won't go beyond my boundary. I will know where I need to walk. I will know where I don't need to get to. My mother don't enter our bedroom. She stayed with us. She, we don't have the right to come to my bedroom. When my mother wants to talk to me, we stay at the door. You'll be calling pastor, pastor. Then I say, ma, mommy, can you hear? If I tell her to enter, I say, no. Ah, you're uh, you right, what talk away. That is the bedroom of you and your husband. No, she will stay outside. We will have to talk, not to talk of your friend. That is the mother that carry me in her womb. Am I really talking to you tonight? There are certain things you need to delete in your life. Am I talking? We spend time to take away some things that is not necessary in our home. Like me now, there are a lot of dresses are packed that I want to, you know, pass to charity. But as I'm packing those dresses, the Holy Spirit also is ministering to me. He said, there are things in your life as well that you need to change. There are things in your life as well that you need to sort out. There are things in your life that must not go with you. 
Praise the Lord. Am I really talking to somebody? I was talking to my pastor this afternoon and I said, listen, I'm preparing for the coming of Jesus. That does not mean I'm dying tomorrow. No, anything that will not make me get there. Now is the time I need to prepare. So I am doing the same thing with you because I don't want to just preach to you. I don't just want to come online because people are coming online. No, that is not the purpose of any of our platform. The purpose of every of our platform is to me to minister the word of grace and the word of God to the people of God to hear it so that when you sit down, you are thinking, that father, what do you want me to do? And you are walking to the point that you were able to hear God and hear God clearly. Praise the Lord. I've told you that it's not everything that needs prayer. Am I talking to somebody? Aha, the wrong kind of friends, unlike good kind of friends, bring out the worst in you, not the best. You see some of you, there are certain things that you are struggling with before. You are struggling, maybe you are struggling with anger. There are friends that you now, you know, in your company, they will make, they'll bring that anger out more. Maybe you are struggling with smoking. You know, you are past that level. Maybe you are struggling with fornication. Maybe you are struggling with adultery. Maybe you are struggling with drug. Maybe you are struggling with alcohol. There's something you are struggling. Maybe you are the kind of person that when money comes into your hand, ah, it sat them round. Maybe you are, you are struggling in that area. You don't know how to keep money. You don't know how to do anything with money. Do you know when you are in the wrong kind of friendship, they bring that out of you. And you'll be thinking, the boy is good. The girl is good. And you are happy. No, no. When you are with the wrong crowd, you see, there are certain things that are not good in you that they also, they pull out. Am I talking? They also do what? They pull it out. Stay away from people that are wrong crowd. Am I, are you hearing me? I told you tonight, it's two prayer points will be pray and God will answer us because today we are looking inward. In power of prayer of tonight, we are doing what? We are looking inward. What did I say? We are looking inward. As I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself. So I'm not just talking, praise the Lord. Stay away from also people who believe to you are being shown. There are some people, they are wrong crowd. When you tell them, and this they laugh, <laughs> you want to go to school at what age? <laughs> and they'll begin to laugh. They'll begin to laugh at you. Ah, you that is mother, why do you want to do that? No, no, no. They belittle your ambition. When you say this is what you are doing, they have the way of talking down. Be careful of people you allow into your life that talk down on your ambition, that talk down on what you are doing. Hallelujah. And not just your addiction. There are people that you, you know, that you allow into your life, they are allowed to talk ill about others. All they will do is to talk ill about other people. Ah, you see that one? Ah, what, what is he doing that ah, nobody has done? When, before you know it, you'll be talking like that. Am I talking? Before you know it, you also will begin to belittle to other people. Before you know it, you'll be speaking like them. Remember, I used an illustration tonight. I use an illustration of when you are long in the kitchen, you smell like the food that you are cooking. It's the same thing with the associate that you keep. You smell like them. That lady I said to you, today, that's the only child that she has. That's the only child. <laughs> and this friend, you know, it's my friend. It's my friend. It's some of you are like that. It's my friend. I have to tell my friend. I have to tell my friend, there's something that is pushing you. If you don't tell your friend, you are not satisfied. When you have sex with your husband, you won't tell your friend. You have to tell that your friend. If you don't tell that your friend, you are not satisfied. You have to tell them, hi, hey, we just finished. <laughs> hey, we just finished. There's that. You say, ah, as for me, there's nothing I hide from my friend. Keep doing it. That's where, why you are still where you are. Am I talking? Is, the, is Pastor Adesan saying we shouldn't have friends? No, that's not what I'm saying. We're going to talk about the other words, but we're going to do it gradually. We are doing what? We are cleaning our life for, preparing for 2021. Hey, 2021. <laughs> hey, don't let me go there. Don't let me even touch it. Stay away from people that you know they are bad markets. I call them bad markets. There are some friends, they are bad markets. Bad market. And I want to also say this to you. You see, there are certain people, once they start 
maybe with your wife. Ah, hey, once they befriend your wife, men, hear this. There are certain people, when they befriend your wife, you will struggle with your marriage. What did I say? You will struggle with your marriage. It's not a cause, but I'm telling you the reality of life. You will struggle because they will dump on that lady, innocent, everything that they do. They will bring it and dump it on them. May that not be your portion. And it's the same thing. If it's, it's vice versa, there are men that once your husband befriend them, uh, if you don't lose that husband 100%, hey, then means that grace is still speaking. Am I talking? So what do you do about those kind of people on your knees? You win the battle on your knees. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God word uh, uh, instruct us to pick our friend carefully. Pick your friend carefully. What did I say? Pick your friend. I must to pick my friend. Don't let people just push themselves into your life. Push themselves into your life by force. Is it by force we do friendship? No. Don't let people push yourself, their self into your life. You see, friendship is so costly. Can I speak to ladies in the house? Friendship is so costly. If you have a friend, once you see you buy one slipper, you say, where is my own? Ah, you buy that slipper, you didn't buy it for me. You buy the slipper, you say, it's so costly. If we see you, you are moving, say, ah, why is it that, ah, you didn't, ah, you didn't do this for me. Ah, why would you buy that scar? So you have somebody that will be like that, your supervisor, and it's a friend. He will ask you, why did you, why did you tie that scarf and you didn't buy mine? Ah, why did you why, buy that resource? You didn't buy mine. Did you give me money to buy yours? We're talking about worthless association. May the Lord deliver us tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's look at the book of Proverbs 25 and 19. We're going somewhere tonight. I want to prepare people of God that our life is transformed. And the Bible makes me to understand that iron sharpens iron. Aha. My life is meant to sharpen your life. My life is meant to sharpen you. There are things that you must look and say, okay, we are not just talking about platform. We are talking about our life here. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Proverbs 25, 19 quickly. It said, putting confidence in an unreliable man is like chewing with a sore tooth or trying to run a broken foot. Hmm. Praise the Lord. The time is running. The time is running. But I make sure we, we make it to the end. Then we do the other part. What did the Bible say? Proverbs 25. Chewing with a sore tooth. Have you ever chewed something when you, you have pain in your tooth? Some of you that you know have experienced toothache, you will know what I'm talking about. That is how wrong association is in your life. The scripture said it. I didn't say that. The book of Proverbs 25, 19 said that. It said, there are some of you, you have wrong tooth in your life. Those are the friends. You can't bite them. You know, you can't bite wrong tooth and you can't eat them. What did I say? You cannot bite them and you cannot eat them. And again, he said, it's also like a broken foot. Wrong company is like a broken foot. Do you see what the scripture compare wrong association with? It's like a broken foot. Can you run with a broken foot? Will you not be crying? Will you not cause yourself more damage? This is what the scripture is saying to us tonight. Remember, I said we have 49 days into the new year. We are preparing ourselves. And everything that is not meant to be in our life, we got to shake it up together. Show me your friend. And I will show you who you are. Who is your friend? People that you call friend, can you show them outside? Are you proud of people that you work with? Are you proud of your association? Is your association the kind of people that you can show off with? You know, at times when you have right association in your life, you want to, you just want to show off that this person is my friend. You just want to, you want to, you want to show them that you, the people you have in your life, can you show them? Or you are doing it under it? Do you have friends in your life that you can't really tell anybody? Why are you hanging with them? You still have people in your life. You are not proud to show them off. Why are you hanging with them? If you are not proud of them. Hallelujah. Until bad tooth is removed, you enjoy, you can't enjoy food. And this is the truth. The scripture said it, I didn't say it. 
Until those friends are removed from your life, there are certain things you cannot enjoy. <laughs> Some of the people you hang with are wrong crowd. What did I say? They are wrong crowd. And when you hang with wrong crowd, you cannot make progress. It's always delay in progress. Your friends determine, sorry, your friends determine the quality and direction of your life. Note that. Note that my friends will determine the quality and direction of my life. And this is the truth. Do you know some of the platform that God has given me in life is as a result of associates. What did I say? Associate people that I know, I wouldn't have been able to get to them. But because of people that I know, those people also know those people. And that was able to give me an opening Otherwise, I would just be in one corner. Otherwise, I would be a lone ranger, brother Totonto, in the same position. May that not be our, our, our portion. When people that hang, you hang out with, they are not bringing any promotion. I'm not saying every French you must take, you must take. But hear this. If you are not taking, then you are giving something. It's either you are giving your time, you are giving your energy, and you are wasting your life or your money. Praise the Lord. Your friends determine the quality and direction of your life. And this is the truth. Praise God. So some of you will have to go on your knees and pray some people out of your life. You have to, you have to. This 2021, hey, 2021. Ask yourself, do my friends add to me? Do my friends add to me or take away from me? Hallelujah. Ask yourself that question. Do my friend add to me or they are always taking from you? They are always taking from you. They are always taking from you. So they have sapped all your energy and they are also taking your money. Do you know, friends always make a huge difference in our life. People that you spend time with. Who are the people that you spend time with? I have some friends that I've never met in life. Can I say that to you? Can I say that? I have friends that I've never met in life. Then you say to me, are they spirit? No, they are not spirit. I befriend them from afar. I've never met them, but I love them. I've seen the, what they produce. And this is how I associate with them. I associate with them through their books. I associate with them through their tapes. I cover the spirit that is over them. Am I really talking to anybody tonight? I don't know why God has me to preach this tonight, but there must be a reason. There must be somebody that God wants to set free tonight. There must be somebody that God wants to deliver tonight. Hallelujah. Who you spend time with really does make a difference in your life, both now and in your future. Who are you spending time with? If we put the bulk of your friends together, do you know immediately we will know the kind of person you are? You don't need to tell us anything. When we put them together, when we see you with certain people, we just know who you are. You don't have to say, uh, you will just know that this is who you are. Hallelujah. Do you know there are friends that will tell you, we are too lenient, we are too lenient with your spouse. They are friends like that. They say you are too lenient with your spouse. Ah, as for me, I don't take nonsense. Oh, I don't take nonsense. And they eat nonsense and drink nonsense in their own marriage. But they will keep telling you, ah, you are too lenient. Why will you take that from a man? How will you take that from your in-law? How will you take that from your mother-in-law? How will you take that from your sister-in-law? How will you take that from the brother-in-law? Ah, man, that's shit. Sorry, I swear. They'll tell you, oh, shit. I won't take that nonsense from anybody. They are taking nonsense. They are drinking nonsense. But, you know, they just want to be big girl in your life. They want to be that big brother in your life. And you listen to them. So before you know it, you also will be answering your husband back. You also will be telling your husband, you are not good. Ah, you are not good. I'm managing you. I'm passing you. Ah, Tasha, this is what Tasha is doing in his own home. He's lying. His husband beats him on a daily basis. But he can't tell you. He want to move you out of your home. One young girl about two years ago came. And after service, she sat with me in the office. She was not really a member. And she said, hey, 
Mommy, I heard you're preaching tonight and my feet is shaking. And I said, what happened? He said, my friend is the one that moved me out of my husband's house. I said, eh, eh. so where are you now? He said, I'm out. He said, I'm out. He said, everything I heard tonight, I feel like running back to the man. He said, but that same friend is in the hands of the husband. Am I talking? I shared with you, I believe it was early this year, a friend that two years ago was the best lady of the friend two years ago. Today is married to that, to that same husband. The friend is no more there. Am I talking to somebody? So there are friends in your life that will tell you, ah, don't go to that church. Ah, you are still in that church. Ah, what are you doing there? Ah, they are looking for a way to come back. They don't know where to come back because they are suffering where they are. There are some grace and anointing that has left them and they are empty. So they want to also talk you out of your grace. Am I talking? Maybe I should stop here tonight. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. But take this scripture and hold it because we are going to pray now. Proverbs 1 and verse 15. What did I say? Proverbs 1 and 15. My son, do not walk in the ways with them. Hold back your foot from their path. That's where we stop tonight. Hold back your foot from their path. Hold back your foot from useless association and complaint and evil doer. They don't have destination. They aren't heading anywhere. They don't have anywhere they are going. The wrong kind of friends will try as much as possible to take you in a journey with them. Am I talking to you? They want to take you in a journey with them. Don't go with them. After tonight, I see your life changing. I see your life transforming. I see the power of prayer working for you. I see prayers that you have prayed secretly. I see those prayers coming back and it's working for you. I see God delivering you. I see God transforming your situation. I see God lifting you up. I see God blessing you through this world. I see God transforming your life, transforming your home, transforming everything about you from this teaching tonight. I see the hands of God coming upon you strongly and taking you to your destination in the name of Jesus. Before we go tonight, I want you to lift up your voice and I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Father, help me. Help me to choose my friend. I want you to pray. Say, Father, help me to choose my friend. Help me tonight. Help me tonight to choose my friend. I want you to begin to talk to your father. Say, help me, Lord, to choose my friend. Help me, Lord. Who are the people in my life that are not meant to be in my life? Who are the people I'm hanging with that I'm not meant to be hanging with? Who are the people that I've surrounded myself with? As you are praying for yourself, pray for your husband, pray for your children. Say, Father, reveal to my children wrong association, people that are not meant to be in their life, people that come like a sheep, but they are wolf in, in sheep clothing. I want you to begin to pray. Pray for one another. Pray for your husband. Who are the people that are sleeping into the life of my husband? Who are the people that are slept into sleep into the life of my wife? Who are the people, Lord, that is excess baggage in my life, Lord, that I don't know, that I don't know? Help me tonight. I want you to begin to pray. Help me tonight. I want you to press a button tonight. Press a button tonight. Say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your grace. Lord, I need your help. Help me to choose my friend. Help me to choose my friend. Help my children, oh God. Every one of my children. Help them, Lord. I pray tonight. Help my children. Help my children. Help my children. They will not be in the wrong company. Help my husband. Help my wife. I want you to pray. Everyone that have listened to me tonight. Father, help them. They will not be in the wrong company. 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 I cry out for help. Oh, Lord God Almighty, friends that are in my life that are not meant to be, Lord, by yourself, I pray tonight as I release myself. Open my eyes to know them and help me, oh God, with great courage and confidence to take them out of my life. I'm not saying they should die, but oh Lord, separate us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I join my faith with you tonight. 
The word of God that we have heard tonight, I pray that this word transform our life. I pray that this word build us. I pray that this word deliver us. I pray that every course correction that we need to make, I pray that we not look at ourselves and be judgmental, but we look at our life and we allow the Holy Spirit to do what he has to do. Thank you, everlasting Father. Help us with this word, to digest it, to meditate on the power of this word. I give you praise, O oh God, and I worship you in the beauty of your holiness. And all the saints of God will say, Amen and Amen. This is a great prayer tonight. The word of God is what brings deliverance. And I want you to go back to the word, spend time with the word, and I know this word will bring transformation to each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Before we go on tonight, I want you to be a blessing to our ministry by giving your offering, by giving your time, by giving again tonight. You are helping the work of God and God also will help you in every area. I believe we have our account on the screen. So I want you to quickly look at it and please give. Please keep the accounts on the screen so that people will be able to give tonight. They have desire to give, so keep it on the stream. Keep it on the stream. P keep it on the stream. Keep it on the stream. If you have not given to us before tonight, I want you to give because I know God is going to use that giving. It's going to give you back and hold grateful. I want you to give your tithe. I want you to give your seed. I want you to keep giving to the work of the kingdom and it shall be well with you. I also want to encourage you tomorrow morning. Please do me a favor every one of you that is online with me tonight to join me again tomorrow morning. And I don't just want you to join me. I want you to bring at least two to three persons to join us in the presence so that we'll be able to pray together. And tomorrow, again, we'll be having two services. We'll be having the God of Breakthrough meeting. I want you to be part of God of Breakthrough meeting. It is well with you. Until I come your way again, I want you to know that I love you and Jesus loves you. If you have not given your life to Christ, it's an opportunity as well to give your life to Christ. And all you need to say, Lord Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want you to forgive me. I want you to cleanse me. I want you to wash me. I believe that your son died for me on the cross of Calvary and he rose up again. And I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Let that blood wash me tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have said that prayer, I want you to know that heaven is rejoicing. And right now, you have given your life to Christ and your name is in the book of life. It is well with you. God bless you. Have a good living. I want you to know I love you and God loves you.